Our next guest has a perspective unlike many, if any at all. He's a journalist, he's an author, he's a broadcaster. He is the one and only Spider Jones. Uh, thanks for stopping by on a day like this. My pleasure, buddy. There you go. <laughs> um, you met Muhammad Ali. Um, you climbed in the ring with Muhammad Ali, and you did so at maybe the most tumultuous time in his life, 1966, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. You want the whole truth? Yeah. Nothing but the truth. <laughs> well, I just gotten out of prison, yeah. and uh, George Chevallo, very good friend of mine, had set it up for me to live at uh, Sully's gym, keep it clean and the maintenance and that. And uh, one afternoon, I was skipping, and they had the old, the old gym. It looked like one of them Damon Runyon type gyms. Right. When, when they try and do it in the movies, this is what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. Posters all over, all the great ones. Kid Gavilan, Sugar Ray Robinson, Joe Lewis, uh, you know, Randy Sandy, names that some people don't even uh, uh, relate to now. And the phone rang, it was one of those wall phones, I picked it up, and a guy on the phone by the name of Donnie Elbum uh, asked for Sully, he had one of those, Sully in, you know. <laughs> yeah. Sully came to the phone, they got in a conversation, Sully became excited, so I, I figured something was up. When's he coming? Yeah, we'll be ready. It was in fact, Ali was coming to Toronto to train because he uh, was supposed to fight in Montreal against Ernie Terrell, but that, uh, 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 the people didn't, uh, uh, the mayor yeah, uh, backed the out. He didn't yep. want any part of that because of the public pressure with the Olympics coming there. Mm -hmm. So Ali ended up uh, coming to Toronto, and I never forget the first time I met him. I was, I'd been out doing my road work, so I come back up Ossington Avenue, going north on Ossington from Queen Street. Sully's gym was over on top of Bart's Collision. Okay. And as I approached the gym, Jim, you could see the, the crowd just jammed there and all the way up the stairs. As I got into the gym, there was about 600 people there, all people that wanted to catch Ali. He was the biggest, the most famous man on earth. Right. And uh, I got through the crowd and I was privy to the back because I was a fighter, I was one of Sully's fighters. And so I went to the back and the media was there and I, I met Angela Dundee and Angie and he got to talking about, uh, I, he was very surprised that I knew so much about him. I right. knew that he had managed, I, I mean trained uh, uh, guys like Carmen Basilio and and another fighter by the name of Willie Pastrano, who was Ali loved Pastrano. Mm -hmm. And um, so I said, you think the champ will take a picture with me when he comes out? He said, oh yeah, he's a great guy. Now, yeah, yeah I pretty much thought he would be. Yeah. Comes out of the dressing room about 10 minutes later, and uh, Howard Cosell comes up behind him, and they all, they start chanting right away, Ali, Ali. Dundee says, come here, come here, hey champ, come here. I got somebody want, I want to meet you wants to meet you. Yeah. So as he's approaching me, and he's got on nothing but a, a, a red, red sweatpants, like, like in the picture, yeah. but, but no shirt on. And he walks up to me with that mock glare, like he's gonna whip me, and the crowd starts to laugh. <laughs> I mean, you know what he's doing. Yeah. And he walks up to me and he looks down at me, and he was tall, he's a lot taller, because I'm six foot two. He was about an inch and a half taller than me. And he says, you supposed to be bad or something? I said, no, I'm just bad enough to keep the bad cats off me. He said, I'm going to whoop you right now. Get out of your jacket. The crowd was eating it up. This is the kind of showman he was. So I pretend I'm going to take my jacket off. He runs and hides behind little Angelo Dundee, and he says, Angie, help me. Help me. He's going to beat me up. I'm going to bleed all over you. I'm gonna, he said, whoop me. He always used the word whoop me. Uh, so that, that's how I first met him. And then you ended up sparring with oh, him. That's crazy. The next day, I'm pounding on the bag, and, and, and again, everybody's there, the, the press, international, and local. I'm working on the bag, and I heard a voice, hey, kid, hey, kid. It was Angelo Dundee, but he called everybody kid. Right. So he said, spider. And I turned around and said, yeah. He said, the champ wants to, champ wants to train. I want you to move with him. And I'm thinking right away, no, I'm not scared to, I'm scared of being humiliated. You get used to getting hit as a fighter. That's yeah, part of the yeah. game. But I don't want to go in front of the press. I mean, everybody is there. Yeah. And, get, and, and get humiliated with six, 700 people in the gym. But I, I get called out, so I got to go into the ring. Right. So we climb up, and I get in the ring, and Ellie by me, and as we're, we're, as we're touching gloves, he says, just work me in the corner and work on me. So that's what I did. Three rounds, of, boom, boom, boom. And he's just harder, harder. So at the end of it, we punch, hit gloves like I did something, and the crowd were clapping <laughs> like, you know what? He could have took me out any second. 
I learned a valuable lesson from him there. And, I, and when I fought other young fighters, or sparred with other young fighters, yeah. I would always go easy on him. I'd remember what Allie did. He went easy on me. He could have took me out in 10 seconds. Yeah. But he was so fast. It, it's, it, unless you're in there with him, to under, you, 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 you can comprehend why he could beat guys like Fraser and Foreman and, and his Shavers and these guys. And in his prime, before he even fought Frazier, that's when I sparred with him. His hands were, were, were he had moves of a, of a middleweight. Right. And lightning speed, and, the, and when the gloves come at you, it was like, it was like a Robinson red flash. Too, yeah. The only thing he didn't have that Sugar had was power. Yeah. Allie could take you out, but Sugar Ray Robinson could knock you out with one punch. What, what, what was the man? What, what was the man like? What was he, how did he treat you? Because it, in, in all of today, there is a lot of talk about what he was, what he could do. We all saw that. You, you dealt with the man. What was the man? When he heard that I was living at the gym, he sent Jimmy Alice and someone else to pick me up. I went back to the Skyline Hotel where they stayed, and for the next uh, two weeks, I lived off his dime. I hung around the fighters, I trained with them. Whenever we went out, I was counted in. And for me, an ex-con, a, a, a public school dropout, a nobody, lived in a gym, was broken than Humpty Dumpty, he treated me special and I watched, I had a chance to be around him and to watch how generous he was to a, to a fault, mm -hmm. how compassionate he was. And I remember going up Young Street and him stopping traffic both ways mm -hmm. and dancing around in the street with people. The police finally came rushing up. <laughs> they got out of the car and they said, uh, oh, you got to stop this champ. You can't do this. And he started dancing around the cop. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And the cop, will you stop that? And people, I swear, I had a, a woman ran up and said, kiss my baby. Yeah. He kissed babies all day, right. and he, he was just funny. He'd, he'd stop somebody in the street. He stopped a white kid one time in the street. He said, I know you. The guy looked at him, young guy, about maybe 20, 21. He, I know you. And the guy said, I don't think you remember me before. Yeah, you the guy called me, and he used the <laughs> N-word. He used to do, you wouldn't yeah, believe this yeah, guy yeah. to get a response to it. He <laughs> used it all the good. time. And the guy looked embarrassed, and Allie says, I'm going to whip you right now. And he took off his coat. Yeah. The guy caught on. You always yeah. could. Allie took off his coat, and he danced around for a couple minutes. I don't know where this kid is now, but you know what he's saying? I worked, I danced around on Young Street with the champion of the world. Yeah. That's well, what I remember about him. You know, I, I look at the resume and I just, I just read it. And I, I know what you've become since that time you're living in Sully's gym. How much of that time, the two weeks, may have molded this? I remember one time after a sparring session, we were in the dressing room and we were, uh, you know, taking off our shoes. I remember these things. I have that type of a mind. And, and I remember Allie and I talking, and I, I started to sing Stand By Me. He said, man, that's my favorite song. And the night. Yeah, that's it. Come. When the night has come, oh baby, yeah. And, and, and I started to tell him about the lead, the guy that sang it, his name was Benny King, yeah. and he began his career with a group called the Five Crowns, and then went on to, they, they transcended into the, uh, into the Drifters, yeah. and he became the lead singer of the Drifters, all that, all that soul stuff uh, up on the roof, under the, yeah. uh, not under the boardwalk, but yeah, that was the Drifters, but he, he didn't lead them, There Goes My Baby, and all them big hits, and he was fascinated. His favorite singer was Sam Cooke. Right. And when I told him about Sam Cooke's history of the Soul Stirs, uh, how he began as, a, as, a, as a, uh, a gospel singer and all that stuff, I tell you, he said, man, I was born to be the heavyweight champion of the world, but you were born to be a, uh, you were born to be on radio. And honestly, I mean, here I was, 20 years later, I get my first gig in radio. And I remember the last thing he said, uh, uh, years and years ago, he said, if I come back up here to Toronto, and you ain't in radio doing your own show. I'm going to whoop you. I'm going I'm to I'm hunt you down. I'm going to whoop you. You should be in radio. That's the way he talked. And he embraced me like uh, he was just that. He's a wonderful man. He's a compassionate man. And, but he was more than that. Muhammad Ali had heart. He had courage. He had a great chin. Yeah. He, I mean, this man never ducked anyone. Even knowing that he was going to go to hell when he fought Joe Fraser, that he was going to the eye of the storm. He never ducked anyone. Fighters today could take a lesson from this man. 
They're so cocky and arrogant, many of them, and they duck their top contenders. He, he loved being the champion of the world. Yeah, and, and perhaps that conviction as, as we've lost him now, uh, the moonlight that we can see and, and we can lean on him for inspiration in that spot. Spider, always a pleasure catching up with you. My perspective my, is amazing. I, I'm so, and I must add, you have come a long way, my friend. Thank you, sir. Give you the alley shake. Thank you, sir. Bamp, and then... One of those? There you go, yeah. yeah it's <laughs> I didn't know if we were going to blow it up at the end. There is uh, the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Spider Jones. Thanks.